Hi guys! So we're back with another installment of the pros and cons of various planner systems and today, as you can see, we're going to be talking about Traveler's Notebooks. So Traveler's Notebooks are a planning system that I was not familiar with until I joined the planner community on YouTube. I'd never heard of them, unlike ring binders and bound planners and spiral planners. I just never come across them. But, you know, quite soon into my voyage into the YouTube planner world, I heard people talking about Midori's and I was intrigued by the concept. I liked the idea of a notebook cover, but I wrote them off because the original Midori brand only has leather traveler's notebooks. I looked for some vegan leather options, faux leather options. And at the time, which was like a nearly a year and a half ago, I, I couldn't find any that, you know, kind of re really looked viable. So I didn't do anything for a while. And then I tried a couple of fabric traveler's notebooks. This was one of the first ones that I got. This is, it's from an Etsy shop whose name I can't remember. It's not one of the really well-known ones like Cake Papery, which I ordered from later. I've never seen anybody else mention it, but I liked this pattern. And I wasn't really sure what to do with them at first because I, I couldn't get my head around the, the idea of using them as an actual planner. I was used to bound planners and I think I just started getting into ring planners at the time. So I first, I used my, my first couple of traveler's notebooks as holders for lesson plans. So this is, these are the notes for a for a Yiddish course that um, that I teach in the summer, and I just use this. This is just a Moleskine Kaye in a large size, and I just use this as a cover. And I kind of felt like I wasn't getting the full benefit out of them because obviously the whole point is that you're supposed to be able to put more than one notebook in, right? So it's a sort of thing where if I had a lot of different courses. I could put them all in the same one, you know, like in each one had a notebook, I could put them in the same one. But, and in fact, I have done that with this one, which I got a lot later. This is a Lyra Dory, which I got recently. And I'm using this to keep the lesson plans for two different courses in. So this is like kind of more like, a, I guess, traditional use of a traveler's notebook because it's got multiple notebooks in it. Still only two though. I really liked the idea of, you know, having like four or five different notebooks and having your planner system and a journal and lots of other things in it. But this was like kind of how I started off just using them as notebook covers. And this is another one. This is a cake papery Fodori that I use as a notebook cover for, this is a single Leuchtturm notebook that I use for keeping notes on my current writing project. So basically they are just kind of glorified notebook covers, which there's nothing wrong with. And I think that there are other people who use them like that, but it's not, re you don't really need a traveler's notebook for that. Although it's nice that, you know, you have all of these different designs, but it's basically just a notebook cover. So it, it's, the same idea as a Filofax Flex or any other notebook cover that you could get that doesn't have the elastics. So it took me a while of like kind of trying to think of how I would use one and not being able to get my head around it. And then in, I'd say probably late, late winter, this, this winter, a few months ago, I found my first vegan leather traveler's notebooks, which was really exciting. So this one is like, a, a sort of mock Midori. It looks very similar to the original Midori. And I started using this as a, a kind of, I'd, we called it like sort of family harmony tracker, uh, Sholem Bais in, in Yiddish or, um, or Hebrew, where like we would write down nice things about each other, it, James and I, if, if we were like kind of, if we were having an argument <laughs> to try to like stop the argument. And that worked well for a little while and then we just got out of the habit of using it and I think that the problem was that it was undated I just made this out of a series of well it's um it's a grid Midori insert and I've mentioned before that I have a problem with undated inserts and even more so with making my own layouts and I think subconsciously I didn't want to use it because I'd drawn a few layouts and I said, okay, like we'll use these, we'll just write in the week. 
and then you know when they get used up I'll draw in some more and subconsciously I didn't want to draw in any more because I I just it goes my brain just it does not like making its own layouts at all like I just feel like I've said it before I'm going to say it again <laughs> I'm sorry this is just how I, I don't know I, I can't deal with them I just feel like the work should be done for me I just want it to be dated and like have everything already there so that I can just go to the right date and use it so we kind of fell off the wagon with this which is a shame because the the idea was good and this leads me to one of my issues with traveler's notebooks which I will talk again talk about again in a minute so this was one faux leather traveler's notebook and then I got this one this is a Zinidor unicorn in personal size which which I really really love and I'm using this to keep track of films that we want to see in the cinema that's one notebook then films that we want to see at home that have already been in the cinema or are old and then tv shows that we want to watch and then this one is just kind of like scrap paper in case we're having difficulty deciding on what we want to watch and we make a short list so i'll talk more again about this in a minute when i go through the pros and cons but that's this one and then this is my most recent traveler's notebook acquisition and i really really like this one and I had very, very high hopes for this. This is a Webster's Pages Traveler's Notebook. And my plan was to use this as a finance tracker because when I got this, I'd been having some success with meal planning. So I'd been doing meal planning probably for about a month now and it's working really, really well. And it's taken a lot of the stress out of like meals and trying to figure out what food to get and what food we should make. So I thought, what's another area of life that can be a problem? finances right so I thought like well if I could do it with meals maybe I can do it with finances and so I got all of these inserts and I was really excited and I started using this as a finance tracker and that kind of ran into problems which I will talk about as well in a minute so this is like kind of my current selection of traveler's notebooks I've got a couple of other ones but this is like basically my history with traveler's notebooks so we are now current and I can now go through what I think about them the sort of pros and cons and what I think they're useful for and what I haven't personally been able to find a good use for them for so one of the cons uh, sorry one of the pros is the first pro is that you can switch covers and there are a lot of really cool covers so I've mentioned before that there is a problem in that there are not a huge number of faux leather, uh, vegan leather options. There are more now that you've got the Zinidori Unicorn and you've also got the Webster's Pages, which comes in a few different colors and is fantastic and is like kind of the most sort of sturdy and professional looking of the faux leather traveler's notebooks, I want to say. I feel like one of the problems with traveler's notebooks can be that, that like they if you if you can't get a really good faux leather one then you're kind of stuck with fabric which doesn't feel quite as substantial to me so this is a really really nice one but a lot like i love all of these and the fabric ones too I like i just love these these are so colorful and beautiful and they make me really happy so it's it's nice i think it's a it can be a very aesthetically pleasing choice and especially if you go for the fabric ones you have so many different choices of colors and you can switch them out and I think that that's really nice because they're just like bright and beautiful and that's awesome so that's one thing that I like about them is that you can switch out the covers I mean really you can do that I guess with with most planning systems with ring binders and with bound books as well you can put different covers on them but it's still something that is nice about traveler's notebooks Another thing that's good about them, for me anyway, is that there are no rings. And I think a lot of people agree that the sort of people who don't do well with rings, I think we kind of gravitate towards either bound planners or uh, traveler's notebooks are, are kind of in a similar category because even if you're using booklets, it's like kind of a series of bound booklets. So there are no rings, there are no discs, there are no spirals, there's nothing to get in the way. It's just either stapled or sewn and I really like that another thing that I like about them is that kind of like ring bound planners or disc bound planners they have a degree of flexibility so if you're using notebooks and you finish one notebook you can you can remove that but keep your other notebooks so I think that this would work really well 
in the same types of situations that a ring planner would be good for. So like, say you want to have lots of different sections and in your plan, you've got a monthly, a weekly, a daily section, and then you have like a journaling section and a gratitude log section and a finance section or whatever. Like you could have a lot of different sections. And this is in a way something that I missed when I decided to switch out of a ring bound planner, which I was using as my personal planner that had a lot of different sections and move into a Hobonichi Cousin, which is obviously book bound because I had had my gratitude journal in the ring bound planner. And I'd also had a section for my like YouTube notes and uh, video ideas and all of my like different planning sections. And then like a section for random notes and a section for reference. And when I switched into this, which is kind of generally my preference being book bound, I discovered that there wasn't enough room for the gratitude anymore because I just, I couldn't get it to work with the, like the, with the planning and the notes and I'd worked out what I wanted the notes for. And so I managed to incorporate everything else, but I couldn't fit the gratitude in. And so I ended up using a different Hobonichi just as a gratitude log, which is fine. But if you had a traveler's notebook, you could have a different booklet for each of those things. And you, you kind of like, wouldn't be able to run out of room unless it got too chunky, but you can fit quite a few notebooks in. So that's, I think not usually an issue. So I think that that's, that's definitely a pro in that it's a way for you to be able to have a kind of like effective ring bound type system or disc bound type system, but without any rings or discs to get in the way. So I really like that. Something else that I like is that they're quite good for archiving. So in that they are made up of, of bound books, you can just take your notebook out when you finished it, put it on the shelf and that's it. It's together. You don't have to worry about individual pages like you do with, with ring planners and, and disbound planners. So you just take that, put it to the side and that's it. I think it's also nice how you have quite a wide variety of notebooks that you can use. So even if you're like me and you're allergic to printing your own inserts, like that's just another thing that I cannot do. I'm just no good at any kind of DIY planner stuff. You can still get, you know, like the Moleskine Volants, the Moleskine Carriers, some of the, depending on the size that you've got, some of the Leuchtturm notebooks fit, then you have the Midori notebooks and you have like happy scrappy inserts and like a whole range of inserts on Etsy of all different sizes. Love Doki also has really nice traveler's notebook inserts. So I think like that's quite nice because you do have a range of options and because the books are, booklets are generally smaller, it's not as much of a commitment. So it's like if you get a booklet like this that has like, I don't know, 48 pages or something, it doesn't feel like, and they're usually quite cheap to buy compared to, you know, like buying a whole, uh, say like year long planner. It's not it's not that much of a commitment. So if you decide that you don't like it, a particular one, then it's, it's not like you're stuck with it for a whole year, depending on what you want to use it for. Um, so I think that those are the kind of the main things that I like about them, but there are also a number of things that I don't like about them or that I just haven't been able to get my head around. So not necessarily problems, but just things that haven't worked out for me, at least not yet. So I'd say that one of the biggest cons for me is that it's very hard to find dated diary inserts for these. And you will know already since I've been mentioning it nonstop that I just like, I can't do undated inserts. And and to me, it seems like at least from the videos that I've seen that most people who use Fodoris as their planners use undated inserts and they write the dates in themselves. And like, you know, my hat is off to anyone who can do that. I just can't do it. It's just not for me. There are some dated inserts, but they're really difficult to get in the UK. At least like I haven't been able to get them. So like the Midori dated inserts aren't available in the UK as far as like from all of the looking that I've done. And they're also very expensive, quite expensive. Uh, And then Yellow Paper House has really nice dated inserts. But again, the shipping to the UK is just astronomical. So it's like it's not really a valid option. And as I've said, I like, I can't deal with printing. So I know like these are, these are my problems. Some of them, it's not problems with the system, but it just means that like, for me, I, like, I can't really use them like that. Another thing that kind of goes hand in hand with that is that because they're sort of designed for these like thin notebooks, the instance that I've seen that are specifically for travelers notebooks, 
whether dated or not, they're like kind of booklet size. So they don't usually have the whole year in them. Like a uh, yellow paper house, for example, has like quarterly inserts and then Inkwell press as well. They have uh, like an A5 size quarterly traveler's notebook style insert that looks really nice, but uh, it's the same, same issue. When I actually, when I went to the website, it was saying that they didn't ship to the UK, which seems odd to me, but that was, that was, the message that came up so that was a couple of months ago so i haven't tried again since then but anyway uh and that that's kind of another issue in for me in that i like to have the whole year together so that's maybe comes from my history of using bound notebooks and that i like to like know that this is a whole year and so it kind of bothers me that you have like quarterly inserts for using it for planning there are like tons of other things that you could use these for not for planning but for me it doesn't work very well as a anything that's dated because of those two issues and I think that um, if you wanted to do something like like to get around it by originally I thought I could use something like a Moleskine or a Leuchtturm planner that you know is that does go for a whole year and will fit in one of these so like it will fit in one of the A5 size Fodoris I was like ha 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 I have uh, outsmarted the system but then what happens if you are like me and you're like OCD about like planner perfection, that will bug you as well. Because if you if you get like a, a Moleskine yearly planner and put it in here, it will fit fine. But it will be about this thick. Right. So unless that's your only notebook that you're using, if you go to put any other notebook in, it will be a different thickness. It will be like a cahier because you can't really fit a lot of like kind of thick planner sized, like Moleskine planner sized inserts in here. It just, it's, they're not really designed for that. At least I haven't been able to, like they, they look ungainly. You could fit two in at the most. So if you put in your other inserts that are smaller, then you'll have like one big insert and then other smaller inserts. And that just annoys me. Like I, I didn't like the way it looked. I tried it and I didn't like it. It disturbed me. <laughs> so that wasn't an option. And so I think you're basically stuck with, and like if you want all of your inserts to be the same size, like, I don't know, maybe that sounds insane to some people, but I know that a lot of you fellow planner addicts will understand, like it just has to look right. So if you want all of your inserts to be roughly the same size, you're kind of stuck with the smaller inserts, which which won't last a whole year unless they're like, you know, monthlies. So that's like straight away, like I just felt like I could never use it as my main planner because of that, even though I like the idea of having all the different sections. So that's like quite, quite a big thing. Another thing is that depending on the size that you get, if you have the standard size, then I feel like you're kind of restricted in a way because you have to look for this, the like Midori size inserts as opposed to just being able to use normal A5 inserts. So if I have the choice, like I always go for A5. So these are all A5 because when they like give the option, I'm like A5 because then I don't have to worry about the inserts and I can just buy like Moleskine Cahiers or, you know, a Leuchtturm notebook or whatever. And it's easier to find than having to order um, Midori sized notebooks and, and also usually cheaper. Although I know like there are a lot of different ones now and I really, really love the happy scrappy Midori inserts. So I think like now if I were to start using travelers notebooks in a sort of much bigger capacity than I am now, I would go for those inserts because she has like ones with weekly spreads, but she also has grid inserts, which are really nice. And that's my favorite type. And then as I mentioned, Lovedoki also has gridded inserts, which are really nice. So it, like, it's not like it's, I'm not saying that it's really difficult to find Midori size inserts or personal size inserts. I've got a few sources now, so it's like not that bad, but it's not quite as easy as just like going into your local Ryman's or Paper Chase or, you know, your local office supply store. So another thing is that often, and recently this is improved, but quite often, they don't have any pockets or pen loops. And so like these ones, all of the early ones that I got, no pockets, no pen loops. And that really annoyed me. The pockets, not so much depending on what you need it for, because if you're just using it as a notebook cover, you don't really need pockets. But if you were using it for something more evolved, 
then you know like if i was using it as a planner which was originally my intention i was trying to find a way to make one of these work as a planner then you i, I would want to have some pockets so fortunately the the more recent acquisitions do have pockets so this one the awesome zunidor unicorn has got lots of beautiful pockets and sadly i'm not actually utilizing them for this but i just like knowing that they're there it doesn't have a pen loop but i, I put on a leuchtturm pen loop and then the Webster's Pages ones have got both a dizzying array of beautiful pockets and a pen loop. So they're just traveler's notebook perfection. But that can be an issue uh, is that like you kind of have to watch out because often you end up without pockets and without pen loops. And I can live without pockets, but I would really like to have a pen loop. So that can be another thing. And then hand in hand with that, there still aren't a ton of vegan leather options and the often the ones that are out there are not like I feel like they're kind of insubstantial compared to a, a ring planner or like say a Hobonichi cover or something I just feel like I would a lot of times I, I wouldn't feel like they're kind of like solid and rugged enough to like use as my main planner and like throw them in and out of my bag and stuff like that but that again could just be personal preference because I know a lot of people do and then the final thing that has been an issue, and this is absolutely just like me, it's, it's just that I, I feel like I haven't quite found the, the right use or like I haven't found as much of a use for them as I would like to. There's really only one of these, aside from just the, the lesson plans that has, I consider a resounding success. So I'll just show you what happened with my finance tracker that I had such high hopes for. So basically, like I said, I really like the idea of just having these full of notebooks and using lots of different notebooks and different notebooks for different purposes. And I think that's the brilliance of them is that you can have this system where you've got like one notebook for X, one notebook for Y, one notebook for Z, and like, that's great. So with my finance planner, I thought that in order to kind of like utilize the different notebooks, because I, I'd ordered these uh different sets of inf inserts from love by gabby and these are all made by love doki and i don't know where else to get them probably aliexpress has them but the etsy shop love by gabby which i'll link below has got them so these are the the standard size ones they also have personal size ones so this is a weekly planner and then there's also a monthly planner and a daily planner so i got them just because I like the look of them and I thought if I think of a use for a traveler's notebook for monthly, weekly and daily, then yay. <laughs> and I, as soon as I got them and, and I got this around the same time, I was like, okay, I'm going to use it for finance tracker. So I sort of like worked out what I would put in each notebook. And so I thought this one I'll keep a run because it's got a, like a yearly tracker. So it's the kind of month by month. So I thought I'll keep track of how much money is in my current account, my, um, I think it's called a checking account in the US. So, you know, like the money that, you know, my normal account that my money goes into and out of. And so I started using it for that. And then I thought, and then I'll use uh, this weekly for my weekly expenses. So you can see I filled in like, um, you can see some numbers on here, but I don't really care. So I was going to write all of my expenses down and then write here whether they were necessary or unnecessary and then like also keep a running tab of how much money was in my account so that like I wouldn't be shocked when I went to check my bank balance. All the, the idea is to check my bank balance every day so that I wouldn't be shocked anyway. And then in this one I was going to write food expenses and also I, I was going to start doing a tracker of like how much money like kind of free money so I worked out how much I spend every month on like, you know, expenses that I can expect like to kind of have to keep money aside for and how much money is left over. And, and then I was going to keep a track, like a tracker on that so that I wouldn't end up running, you know, so I'd know how much I'd spent on like, you know, plan of supplies and cinema tickets and stuff like that. So that was going to be here. I hadn't started yet because I was going to start at the beginning of May. And then here on this monthly view, I was going to keep track of how much money we spent per week on food shopping. And then this has got some extra, it, like the monthlies only go up to here. And then it's got this grid paper, which I hadn't figured out what to do with. And then I had this third one, which I was going to keep track of my savings account totals and then just notes for my budget. Like, so this is where I worked out how much I have for like direct debits every month for 
charity, how much my monthly expenses are, like council tax, my phone, um, pet insurance, electricity, all of that kind of stuff, how much my yearly expenses are, and then like my total fixed monthly expenses. And then I was just using this for random finance related notes. So like, what are, what are the things that I want to track in the finance planner and all kinds of stuff like that. And then James uh, briefly got carried away by the enthusiasm and he decided he was going to ha have a finance tracker as well. So obviously I put that in here. And so for that, we used a Midori insert because I happen to have this undated weekly Midori that I bought earlier, w uh, misspent birthday money. <laughs> and so he, he started using this for writing down his bank balance. And so I used this for about a week and I really loved the Traveler's Notebook. I loved like kind of picking it up and like taking off the elastic and I loved the aesthetics of it and I liked opening it. But the problem was, and, and this is a planner adding problem. This is not like a real actual serious problem, obviously. But the problem was that it felt messy because I had all of these things spread over three different notebooks. And so I, I started like working out this is this is why I was writing in here what I would use a finance tracker for when I already had a finance tracker uh, so I was thinking what are all of these different things that I'm tracking that I like tracking and would they fit in a single planner with a monthly and a weekly view and I realized that they would so then I was like actually it would make a lot more sense to keep all of this stuff in one place rather than like flipping th between three different notebooks so this was kind of like my, where I went wrong because I wanted to like be able to use the Midori, uh, Fodori system and like have different notebooks in. Cause it's like, what's the point if you only have one notebook, right? Like you might as well just have a notebook cover. So I wanted to like kind of utilize all the elastics and which I, I realized is in a way is, is kind of silly because like who cares how many notebooks you have in your Fodori, but it's just, you know, like if you, I think you see a lot of people on YouTube, like with all of the different inserts and it looks really cool and like they get chunky and it just, I wanted to be involved in that somehow. I like the idea of it, but you have to be really careful what you use it for. That is the moral of the story because with this now, because I've written in these, and again, like I still had the problem. I can't get past this, like having to put the dates on. I just don't like doing it. I'm sorry. I just, I don't, it's a, it's a personal shortcoming of mine. And in here as well, it really bugged me. So it's like, it looks messy. I don't like having my own handwriting for official things like dates. I want the dates to be like nice and beautiful and printed. So basically what happens here, if, if things go wrong as they did here, you end up with some partially used notebooks that you're then not really happy about and you're not sure what to do with and you, because they're not, it's not like the disc bound system or the ringed binder system where you can just take those pages out and like, or spiral in fact, and just, you know, carry on as if nothing had happened. If you tear these out, they're going to look unsightly. I know I've tried it. Even if you use like an exacto knife or a Stanley knife, it's still like, you'll know that they're missing pages and you can kind of see it and the staples won't be in the right place and it's not good. So I have done that a couple of times with other traveler's notebooks and it just always bugged me because I'm insane. So, and like for the monthly plan, like I couldn't, you know, if I were to like tear out this, then I would not have a full year's worth of months. So it's kind of like, in a way, I feel like it can be the worst of both systems in that like the, with the ring bound planners, you have the rings, which, you know, you, you might not like, but at least you can start over again from scratch if you mess up your inserts. Whereas with a bound notebook, everything is together. You, you can't, you know, you can't like kind of make a huge mess, but at least you've got the whole year together. Whereas with this, you have all of these like itty kind of bitty notebooks, but if you make a mess, you, you have to get rid of the whole thing unless you can, you know, find some way to cover it up. And I've seen that some people that print their own inserts, which again, I take my hat off to you if you can do that will like not bind them purposefully so that they can, you know, like d don't staple them just so that they can take them out if they make a mistake, which is great. But then like, I, I like the idea of having everything all together and bound and nice. So yeah, th this is essentially the issue I think is that like, I feel like I have to be really careful in like exactly why I want different notebooks and why, like I have to almost kind of like justify to myself before I start using them am I absolutely sure that a traveler's notebook is the best thing or would I be able to get the same amount of information into a single planner, either like bound or disbound or like, you know, something that's kind of consecutive and dated rather than a series of different notebooks, because 
if if you do use them for the right things and like say like i said if you had like one youtube insert one planning insert one journaling insert like one gratitude log one for shopping lists that seems like a really efficient use of these because each one is is independent and you can you can use them up each at its own pace but if it's something where actually you, it turns out after you've started it that it's kind of confusing having to look through all the different notebooks like in this case i had all my expenses here but they were just kind of confusing because they weren't like organized and then I had like the, the food expenses were separated here and then I had to like flip back and forth. And I thought what would be ideal was something like the Disc Agenda Manta, which James stole <laughs> the day that it arrived. But I'm very happy because he loves it and I think he's found Planner Peace. So that's awesome and it was worth it. But I just realized that like something like that would be perfect be or, or the new edition of the Happy Planners, something that has, I say three sections. You can say food expenses, free expenses, uh, you know, like other expenses or something like that. That would be perfect. And then you could see all of your expenses and then you could put all of your totals at the end and like add them all up and you could see them all in one place. And then on the monthly view, you could put your uh, current account totals and savings account totals and you could just see it all in one place. So I realized that something like that would be better for me than this because this is like all over the place. And now I'm kind of stuck with it and I don't want to use it anymore and I'm not sure what else to use the notebooks for. So that is a cautionary planner addict tale. Um, so really, in the end, like where I am now with Traveler's Notebooks is that I feel like for me, they're really, really good for as notebook covers for lesson plans. And if I'm lucky, I can, <laughs> I can keep two different uh, course plans in one and then that makes me feel quite satisfied that I'm using more than one of the elastics or for something where it's absolutely essential that I have different notebooks or like it kind of is a strength to have different notebooks like the cinephile so I'm saving this for last because this is my success story so with the cinephile like I mentioned I have different notebooks for films that we want to see in the cinema that are just coming out films that we want to see at home and tv shows that we want to watch and this is actually, I also found this out by trial and error because for a while I was keeping these lists in, they were in a few different places, but I think that the one that they were in for the longest was in my Levenger Circa Disbound system. So they were just like individual pages of lists. Oh, actually beforehand, there was a while when I was using the spiral bound Jewish calendar as my home planner and that only had room for the calendar for the diary I actually had a traveler's notebook which I didn't show you here because I don't have it anymore I was using a traveler's notebook and I had a couple of different inserts and one of them was like t was tv shows and films and there I had like one page for films we wanted to see in the cinema and one page for films that we wanted to see at home and one page for tv shows and that was a problem as well for the same reason as this well kind of a similar reason in that because it, it's like bound notebooks, I wasn't sure how much space to leave. So it's like I'd left like kind of two pages for cinema and I thought that should last a while. But then I was like, well, what if it runs out? Then what will I do? Because then I'll have to like, you know, make another list in the middle of like after the TV shows and that will be messy. Whereas if you had it in a disbound or a ring bound system, you could just put another sheet in. So then I had it in the disbound system, which was better because that was like individual sheets. So it didn't matter you know, like if I filled up a sheet of of films to see, I could just add in another sheet. But then when this came, I thought I could put it in this and use different notebooks. And it's perfect for this because now I don't have to worry how many films we want to see. I don't have to like kind of map out the amount of space that I need for it because it's got its own notebook. And I'll just keep using this until it fills up and this will last forever because like, you know, how many films do you want to see in the cinema? Like I've already had this for probably three months. So this will last a long time. So that's a very good investment. And then the same for these. This is films that we want to see at home. So it's like like that. I just tick them off when we've seen them. And then TV shows. So like this will last forever. I won't have to buy new inserts for a very long time. And it works really well having them in different notebooks because it means that I don't have to worry how long each one lasts. If this one fills up first, I'll just take it out and replace it and the other ones can stay the same. So. I think like for me, this is a perfect use of a traveler's notebook and 
I'm not saying that there are no other perfect uses for Traveler's Notebook, like for me to discover, but at the moment, that's where it is. So I think it's like, if you want to use the multiple notebooks, you have to be really careful to make sure that you actually do want to have multiple notebooks because it's not as easy a matter to, you know, kind of like switch them up or get, or replace them as it is with a ring bound planner or a disc bound planner. And I think with bound books, it's not so much of a problem because usually with bound books, you don't, unless it's a bullet journal and it's, you know, just a blank notebook. If it's a, if it's a bound planner with dates like a Hobonichi, you don't have that issue because you're usually using it, you're working with the dates. So you, you, you don't usually make them into different sections in the same way. So you, you don't quite have that issue if you see what I mean. So this is like a middle ground where it has some of the properties of a bound book and some of the properties of a ring bound or disc bound planner. And for me, they can often kind of like get messed up. <laughs> so I end up kind of, you know, like I said, for me, it can be the worst of both worlds. But that's just been my experiences so far. I really, really like the idea of them and I like the way they look and I like the concept. So I think for now, I'm just going to be contented with having my notebook cover style use and then having my cinephile, which works really well. And I will keep thinking if there's something else that I could use them for that would work as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let me know your views on Traveler's Notebooks if, if you've had similar experiences or, or not, if you've had different experiences with them. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back again soon. Bye.